Hey, it's Brooks with Character Design Forge. Some of you may be too young to remember One Hour Photos. It was a service where you could drop off your camera's film roll, and in an hour, you would come back to printed photos. In the spirit of that, and because of my severely limited available time right now, while I'm finishing up the new Learn Character Design course, we're going to see how much character designing I can do in just an hour in Procreate on the iPad Pro. It would, of course, be easy to just draw something I've already designed before, or work off of a concept I've already been mulling over, but instead I'm just coming into this completely cold. The only inclination I have is that I'd like to make something sort of space-themed. So many of my characters are these either earthly, natural aesthetic characters, nothing wrong with that, but I want to maybe leave the planet for a sec. My initial concepts are all about shapes, broad, messy, gestural shapes. At a certain point here, I figure out that I'd like for this character to have four arms, and I eventually shorten the legs a bit to give those arms a little more prominence. The face is what I end up taking the most time on, since that's going to be what people are drawn to, and that's my priority. Given my own process and shortening it up, I know that I'll probably spend the first 30 minutes or so on the concept, and then I'll need to hurry up and do just a quick ink and color fill to finish it up. This will not be a beautifully rendered piece. Fun fact, no one is out there designing characters in an hour. It's silly. It should be a much more meditative, experimental, thoughtful journey instead of a rushed one. But this is an especially fun exercise just to put your feet to the fire. Speaking of Procreate, one of the things that literally saved me some time were its quick line and quick shape tools, which I was able to use for some of the final ink lines and some of the sketch. You also have the edit shape function, which absolutely helps. I will say as a warning though, not to lean on these tools, and also be careful that you aren't getting rid of some of the through lines and gesture by creating computer-lined shapes. One thing that I think this process illustrates on a really micro scale is the idea that we're always trying to push as artists of failing faster, getting through more things, knowing that you're doing them wrong in order to start over quicker to learn and do better in the future. and. What better way to illustrate this than by showing that at least a third of the time on this process, which isn't even fully rendered, is spent rendering. Which, even though rendering is in itself its own skill to learn, I see way too often people taking these sort of underbaked sketches or things, uh, sketches that lack the fundamentals, and going through this eight-hour process of trying to paint them or render them out uh, beautifully when in reality that initial step was flawed. Instead of taking eight hours, spending the first hour sketching, and then the following seven hours painting and rendering, why not spend eight separate hours of drawing and get better, clearly eight times faster. Toward the end of the sketch, the thing that really trips me up is getting the arms looking good and posed in a way that makes sense. Since I have spent a total of no minutes really thinking about anything through about this character, I don't really know who they are or what they do. Late in the process though, since he was already somewhat insectoid and the shape of this helmet turned out somewhat lamp-shaped, I realized he could be a sort of space firefly, or lightning bug, whatever you call them in your region, and I repeated those shapes in the staff that he carried. You'll notice that at each step of this process, a little bit more detail and specificity is added. We start with very brushy, broad shapes underneath, and then with the sketch layer start to add specificity of detail, and finally with the inks, add that final decision point. And I think that's a really good process to use to start broad and go more specific. You don't want to be working on details too soon in your process, otherwise you might trip something up or leave another area completely unaddressed. I thought I gave myself a good amount of time for the rendering and inking, but toward the end here I have turned my ink layer to reference and I am panic filling the character in. Just figuring out a good color scheme could be an hour of work on its own, maybe even creating multiple iterations of color. 
but when the clock finally hits zero, I'm left with the barest of bones as far as the color is concerned. So this is what I had after the hour, but not being content to leave him like this, I put another 10 minutes on the clock, of which I used seven, to get the colors a little more right, to render out the glow on his staff more believably, and use a quick multiply layer to give a little bit of a shadow depth to him. It's not the ideal finished render, but I have to say it could be a lot worse, and I'd encourage you to try the same to see what happens under pressure. What things do you default to in your process, and what do you feel suffers the most in this limited time span? There's a new Biko's backpack for June, Feather and Quill. You can get that at patreon.com slash bageldenizen, and the new Learn Character Design course will be here June 30th. Find out more at learncharacterdesign.com. I'm going to get back to work on that. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.